Hey, all right. Hello again. Here to talk about the ultimate dive watch. But before we do that, here's my wrist check. Zenith El Primero 42 millimeters, Chronomaster. I wish it was the sport. I wish it was the the tenth of a second, but it's not. It's just the original, not the original original. This is the 42 millimeter, 42 millimeter version, El Primero. Just a nice looking watch. I like it sometimes, but it's not really my go-to watch and I'm thinking about letting it go. Who knows? I might keep it, it might grow on me. I've had it for like six, seven months. Never really, you know, wore it religiously. I think I might've worn it about 10, 10 times and when I think about wearing a watch, uh, it never really makes my rotation. Um, but for the video, I put it on, I winded it up, and here it is. Zenith El Premier. It's a good looking watch, now that I have it here. All right. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about the Ultimate Die watch because I've seen some videos and I exhausted a bunch of different, different YouTube shows and all explaining different dive watch. What's the best dive watch? What's the ultimate dive watch? Uh, best dive watch for ten thousand dollars. Best dive watch for five thousand uh, dollars. Etc. 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 So I just wanted to talk about the dive watch. What is the number one dive watch today and to talk about the ultimate dive watch we have to figure out what makes something the ultimate not much to figure out i know what makes something the ultimate it is it's got to be the best right so for example you got you know five runners all running the Olympics, 100 meter dash, and you wanna know who the fastest person is. Whoever wins the race is the fastest person. There's no debate, right? There's no, well, uh, this person did this, this person wore that shoes, no, this person ran the quickest, he won the race, end of story, he is the ultimate runner um, and the fastest runner, right? Until somebody beats him. Well, for a long time, uh, the Rolex Deep Sea was the title holder of the ultimate dive watch. Okay. And we're not talking about watches that fit your lifestyle or is this going to fit underneath the cuff or is this the dive watch that I can wear a suit with um, and, and at the same time go swimming right after you know, versatility, and all dive watches can pretty much do that nowadays anyway, right? And now uh, it's very rare that even uh, people wear a suit to go to work. And if they do wear a suit, uh, very rare that they wear um, a very tight um, cuff. Um, and if you do, uh, you choose to do so. Um, when I was working in the 90s, um, I had no choice. I wore a suit every day. Um, didn't matter if the weather was 100 degrees, I wore a suit and tie. Um, so, but luckily now, the times have changed and you can pretty much, uh, you know, just look professional um, without the jacket and without the tie. All right, well, let's get back to it. So for a while Rolex held the title. They had the deep sea sea dweller. And they even had the James Cameron version, which I owned um, for like about a year and I loved it. Um, you know, I, I, I can easily pull it off. Uh, and these type of watches don't really feel heavy for me. Uh, I mean, come on. Yeah, all right, yeah, see, yeah, yeah. They're all light to me. <laughs> Um, so, uh, weight never really mattered, and, you know, in terms of, um, 
the size of the deep sea at 44 millimeters. Uh, I've worn watches that are 46 uh, millimeters, uh, no problem. Um, so anyway, it held the title. And I thought when it came out, it was amazing, right? It, it was 3,900 meters, which is equivalent to 12,000 feet. It had all this technology into the case that made it capable of doing 3,900 meters. And with James Cameron backing it and taking it down to the deepest parts of the earth, um, it was just an amazing feat. And it was, it was just amazing, right? It was, it was, it was a good story and it definitely helped with, uh, you know, the clout of the Rolex Deep Sea. But here we are now, 2022. And I do know, you know, they did some stuff in 2019, etc. But anyway, when it got released to the public, 2022, the Omega Ultra Deep takes the crown as the ultimate dive watch. Yes, it is the ultimate dive watch. It is the most capable dive watch. There's no ifs, there's no buts, there's no, this dive watch is better. No, this is the watch that can beat all other dive watches in every way, okay? It can go deep. It can go deeper. When you think a watch like a Rolex Deep Sea can go really, really deep, this goes deeper, okay? It, and it doesn't do it by a little, okay? 3,900 meters, which is 12,000 feet, is, is crazy, right? But with the ultra deep, okay, it goes down 6,000 meters, okay, and that's 20,000 feet, right? That is amazing. It didn't beat it by 100 meters. It didn't beat it by, uh, uh, by one meter. I mean, it, it's a big gap, right? And... Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, and you can comment below, but since I've never really held one, I've only admired it through pictures, etc. Um, and, you know, I did some reading, and, but it was a while back. I don't even remember seeing that it had a helium escape valve. How did they do it? I don't know. I mean, the, if you think about it, the Tudor Pelagos lost its helium escape valve. And with that, they also lost 300 meters of its capabilities. Now it's a baby Pelagos. That's what they should call it. The baby Pelagos. Okay? You got, you know, Black Bay Pro. And if the Black Bay, if, and, and the Black Bay 30, 58, and if the Black Bay 58 became 200 meters and turned into 100 meters, they should just have it the, back, the baby back. Baby back. All right? So they could now call the black bay the baby black bay 39 okay because now it lost 300 meters um, from 500 it lost the helium escape valve and all of a sudden it's down to 200 meters and here yet uh, uh, you know we have omega with the planet ocean ultra deep going 20,000 feet 6,000 meters we know with no helium escape valve Again, I want you guys to correct me if I'm wrong, but I did not see it in any of the pictures. And I'm a pretty visual guy, and I didn't want to read all the mumbo-jumbo uh, because I, I work a lot, and I do a lot of reading <laughs> at work, contracts and documents and tons and tons of stuff I have to do. So I don't have that much time to go over um, all the specs of the watch. However, I do believe that it was able to do it without a helium escape valve. And to top it off, they gave you options, right? You either can get it in titanium or the Omega Steel. O dash Mega Steel. Okay. <laughs> I think it's like their version of the 904L steel. 
Um, I think it's great that they did that. It's great that they're moving forward and thinking of innovative ways to, to make something already amazing even better. Okay? And, and that's what I love about watches, actually. It's just the, they get something that, that's already good and they think about how do we enhance this even by a little and get it done and offer it to the people. Okay. Now, you can get it get in a titanium, which I think is a great option. It's light, especially for the size of this watch. I think it comes in at 45.5 millimeters. It's quite big. And for a lot of people, it, they may buy it just for its capabilities and, you know, wear it once in a blue moon and leave it tucked away and just enjoy knowing that they own one of the best watches the ultimate dive watch actually they own the ultimate dive watch the best dive watch um because it beats all other dive watch watches um and they own it and they just tuck it away and every now and then they may take it up and um, um and, and leave and, and wear but you know if you do wear it regularly and if you're that type of person where size and weight doesn't really matter in my case it really wouldn't um, the titanium would probably be good because it's not too heavy um, it would be heavy in the omega steel uh, and which um, i actually prefer because i prefer the way steel looks uh, over how titanium looks even if this is the grade 5 titanium you know they you it, you can make it you know you can polish it up really good uh, I know Grand Seiko does their grade 5 titanium and when you look at it it looks just like as polished as steel it doesn't look as flat or um, gray as other um, um, titaniums like the grade 2 titaniums out there so I would prefer the steel version because I like the weight doesn't feel too heavy for me um, and um, I like it I mean you know what's what's you know I, I've never really seen a one pound watch and I don't really know how much this one weighs but I don't think it would weigh you one pound <laughs> so it'd be nothing all right anyway and they did it for a price of twelve thousand three hundred for the titanium eleven thousand six hundred for the steel in a bracelet um, and 11,200 on a rubber strap. So you can actually just get it on a rubber. I think it's amazing. Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think is your ultimate dive watch? Or do you just agree with me? Um, and well, in this case, to me, it's not debatable. They are the champ. They hold the crown. They have the belt. They are the most capable dive watch. And if you're looking to find what the ultimate dive watch is, that's the answer. All right, checking out, guys. Thank you.